Douglas, so thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm very interested in the position that you've got now at the moment with the University of Hong Kong, and basically it's your job to send the message outside to the world, to Hong Kong, to Asia about Hong Kong U. But first of all, I want to talk a little about your background. And a theme that I've seen, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you've had a lot to do with brand management and building that brand and that seems to have been quite a big part of your success and to get you to the position where you are now. You started off in law? Yes, uh, I'm actually a graduate of Hong Kong U. Yeah. Uh, I graduated in 1990 and then uh, became a lawyer uh, in 1993 after training and then uh, you know, I've been a lawyer ever since. And you were in charge of some quite big portfolio names as well. I read about you managed the IPO for PetroChina? Yes, I did. I did. It was uh, the, the last transaction that I did at my uh, former law firm, uh, Baker McKenzie. Uh, I also work on some of the initial public offerings of, for example, the Chinese Senior Airlines, uh, Ting Yi, and a few of the other state-owned and pr uh, privately-owned enterprises. Okay. Yeah. And then you had a big change to the jockey club, so you went to a charity. How did you make that adjustment when you're going from one sector to the other? What was that like for you? Actually, after many years, you know, traveling in China, working on IPOs, I decided that, you know, after the, the mega PetroChina deal, that I would like to have a change, uh, meaning that, you know, I want to do something else and, you know, learn about the other aspects of the law. So I decided that, you know, probably, you know, switching to an in-house role would give me that opportunity. And I decided, uh, to the surprise of many, uh, that I uh, did not join uh, an investment bank uh, or uh, in a, another law firm, and uh, I joined a jockey club. Uh, and I started to do things which I did not have a chance to do when I was at Baker McKenzie, meaning that you know, I had to deal with uh, IT law, employment law, and uh, we had to deal with you know, other issues relating to horse racing. And uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a whole new dimension to me. But at the same time, you know, it was great learning opportunity, you know, for me um, to pick up something that uh, for many years, uh, you know, they were, uh, these opportunities were not available. Mm. So you mentioned IT law. I imagine that was probably, that, well, that's something that still does develop. Yeah. As a, you know, technology changes all the time, so the law has to adapt. So you're used exactly. to having to adapt and figure things out as yes, well. Yes, that's right. So. Here you are now at the University of Hong Kong, and well, tell me a bit about your about your role and your aims here. Now. I joined the university about three months ago, mm. uh, so I'm sort of brand new. Uh, uh, and before that, uh, I was with the jockey club for almost 15 years, and then uh, last September, I uh, again decided to uh, you know make a change because uh, after many years as a lawyer, uh, I was also very fortunate to be given the opportunity. Uh, to oversee the uh, charities portfolio of the Jockey Club. As you know, you know the charities portfolio of the Jockey Club, you know, as a not-for-profit enterprise, yeah. uh, we're talking about a, an annual donation of over $3.5 billion a year. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a huge uh, portfolio that uh, we had to take care of. And then, uh, you know, I was in charge of that uh, 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 um, uh, position, you know, for, for five years. Mm -hmm. But then uh, it... Uh, transpired to me that, uh, you know, maybe after 15 years, uh, you know, I should be, you know, looking at something else. Uh, because to me, um, I, I find it most exciting that, you know, if I can continue to learn new things, uh, right. for me, that's very important. So even before Hong Kong U, I started a private museum in Hong Kong. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, 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 which focuses on photography. So uh, I worked on a project which turned a historical building uh, into uh, a private museum in Happy Valley. Uh, which was uh, great fun, and uh, and uh, you know I, I learned about uh, the business of a private museum, uh, how to operate a gallery, how to build up an archive, um, and how to curate shows. So you know these are opportunities which again were not available, uh, yeah. uh, you know during my career um, in corporates. So um, and. Uh, um, you know, again, I find that uh, very enriching. Um, and Was that a passion of yours? It's a passion Sorry. of mine. And uh, also, I, I, I found it uh, most rewarding, you know, when you can turn your passion into yeah. uh, 
um, I would not say a career. You know, a career, you know, some uh, I would say that uh, uh, may be a bit difficult sometimes to adjust because you know, your passion, and then if you have a business, then you have to balance a lot of things. But uh, you know, if you if you can spend a lot of time, you know, developing your passion into something that can be shared uh, with the public, um, you know, I, I think that is very meaningful. Very and during rewarding. that short period of time, you know, when I could focus uh, basically all my time, you know, on the private museum, uh, basically I, I found it uh, excellent that you know so many people uh, who love photography came to the museum. And um, you know, through this forum, this platform, I actually managed to meet so many new friends uh, as a result. So a couple of days ago, we just opened um, another exhibition. I was very fortunate to have our president and uh, yes. vice chancellor there um, as the, um, one of the officiating guests. And we work with La French May uh, yes. this year on that as well. Wonderful. So uh, it, it was great. You know, we, we were saying that oh, you know, amongst the uh, almost 100 guests, you know, that evening, they came from maybe 15 different countries. Yeah. So it's such an international and and a you know, good mixture of, of guests, uh, you know, who are interested in photography, heritage, yeah. uh, and private museums. So uh, you know, that that is also something that you know I really enjoy doing. See, I find you really interesting because you've come from some very um, secure traditional jobs like in the law and um, a secure job at the jockey club but now you've also got the experience that the young entrepreneurs here need today and the advice that they need you know you've just done your own startup yes. that you're saying with the museum yes so okay what is the advice that you would that you would give them the, the young people today at the University of Hong Kong perhaps you know some students when they graduate, they want to start a business. Can you distill it, or I yes. is it just too? There's too much advice. Where would you start? No, I, th I think a lot of people have given a lot of advice, you know, sure. to startups. You know, but for me, I think the number one principle is, you know, just uh, you know, follow uh, your dreams. Mm. I think that is very important because you have to be passionate about certain things uh, to achieve excellence. Mm. I always believe that you know, uh, passion is what separates mediocrity and excellence. So um, um, if you know what you like and if you're really passionate about it and, and you know, in the process you know, think about how you can turn your passion or expand your passion into something that is not only for yourself, but if it's something that uh, could actually benefit the others and to also be shared with others, I think the community would, would definitely welcome that. And, uh, and why that, that sharing? Is that to do with your upbringing? Is that to do with your values? Or is it just you're naturally compassionate for society and, and wanting to help society? I think it's a little bit of both, yeah. uh, or, you know, all the factors you mentioned. But at the same time, um, I think sharing is, is fun. It's, it's, you know, it's very rewarding. At, at the end of the day, you feel that you have created something you know, yourself. And then you know, sharing with others, when, when you see people appreciate you know, what you've done, and then they offer you advice or they ask that, you know, can we work together on certain things? And as a result, new projects uh, uh, come up. And then you, know, you have the opportunity, just now I said, that they're meeting new friends. And they share their ideas with you. And together, you create something even bigger. I think it's a process that you know you continue to add value to the community. You continue to bring something um, that maybe the community is lacking, and then you work with others um, to create something big together. You know, I, I think that is the fun of it. You seem so calm and measured, yet also passionate. Ha have there been moments though where where you've you've felt you know that saying ruffled someone's ruffled your feathers or things just aren't working out? Have, have you experienced that, and how do you? Get through that. I know. Well, as, as, as I said, you know, when we organized, you know, all these exhibitions, mm -hmm. or when we did a project, there were actually lots of things that <laughs> happened yeah. uh, that were, you know, uh, 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 not within our plans. You right. know, like you know, on the day of the opening of the exhibition, suddenly, you know, we had a big mural on the wall, and and that morning we had guests coming in, we had the media coming in at eleven o'clock, at ten thirty, the whole mural fell down. <gasps> okay, so. So within that half an hour, and I was in another meeting. Oh. Uh, so uh, you know, we, we had to you know figure out uh, immediately you know what what to do to make sure that you know everything was all right you know within yeah. half an hour. Okay. But I guess uh, you know we all of us you know face this kind of you know mini crisis uh, or events you know daily. Mm -hmm. And so I think you know after seeing so many of them and and, and handle a few of them. 
um, then I think you know after you gain certain experience, you would know that you know, uh, 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 or you know you become very solution oriented, and you will yes. try to find solution to to tackle every problem that comes in your way. And do you? I mean, do you have a very big team at the museum? Uh, no, we, we well we have about three to four full time and part time employees, right. but at the same time, you know, we have a lot a lot of volunteers, student volunteers, mm -hmm. and, and this is something that I'm really proud of because uh, I think the volunteers they come to help because after their visit to the museum, they just love the place so much that you know they raise their hands, they send us emails saying that you know I want to spend time here, being a, a docent, a tour guide, and uh, helping out with research, and so you know on the day of the opening of the uh, exhibition we actually rely a lot on our volunteers uh, to help greet the guests and then do many different things uh, otherwise you know for me especially now that I've joined uh, Hong Kong U it's basically impossible for me to uh, to uh, be as hands-on as I would love to be yes. so but now you know I'm so proud that you know the team of volunteers that we've got, um, I think they have handled most of the work very competently. And this is also one of the advice I want to give to the startups. Mm -hmm. Because I think along the way, you know, you have to share your vision, you have to share your passion, you know, with others. Because, you know, this is something that you will be able to influence others. They will pick up your passion. They would feel as excited as you. And they wanted to get involved. They wanted to become part of something great. So uh, make sure that you know when you do start up, you know anyone, um, you know just tell people your story, okay? Right. And then you know hopefully in doing that, people would buy your story. They would you know be a supporter and they would you know help you along the way because you know if you only have one or two persons you're working on, it's very lonely. Yes. And then and then you know you see your group expanding, you see more and more people. Um, uh, you know, looking to you for your leadership, yes. I, I guess, you know, that would also increase your confidence, yes. you know, to make things even better. Right. Yeah. So make them feel like they're a part of this exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Engagement and also, you know, participation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And now for Hong Kong U, what, what are your aims here in well, this position? Yeah. Well, uh, we have a lot of work to do at Hong Kong U because uh, uh, we have so much to offer at Hong Kong U. Uh, Hong Kong U being uh, really an institution in Hong Kong, you know, for over a century. And, uh, and you know, we have educated so many leaders, uh, you know, for Hong Kong mm. um, uh, for so many decades. And uh, I think, you know, Hong Kong U nowadays, uh, because the community, uh, the campus community is so big, and I think uh, we are doing so many things. And so on the branding side, I think it's important that we really do a review with the major and key stakeholders. And again, we have to ask, you know, who we are in 215, um, um, you know, uh, what does the public um, expect from Hong Kong U? Uh, how do they see Hong Kong U? How do our future potential students see Hong Kong U? How do our donors see Hong Kong U, our alumni? So I think it's, it's good that, you know, from time to time we have a review and we talk to them and then get their feedback as to okay. how we define Hong Kong U in this day and age. And you know, I think this is very important, you know, for us to move forward because, it's especially from management point of view, and also maybe from uh, for the leaders of each of the faculties, you know, I think they need to know uh, what the public expects, um, the public perception of Hong Kong U. And then I think you know we have to have you know constant dialogue and engagement, you know, with our key stakeholders. And that is why I think you know the brand of Hong Kong U. We cannot just rely on saying that oh, you know, we have a great brand and we do nothing. You know, we have to continue to, you know, expand. We have to continue to um, make our brand look even more attractive uh, in Hong Kong and overseas. I mean, I think this is um, a, a key part of it that, uh, you know, makes an institution great and become even greater. And at the same time, um, I also look after, you know, com I will be looking after communications mm. and also um, um, uh, alumni, uh, fundraising and community relations. I see all of these, um, are, they are related to one another. Yes. So yes. Uh, I would like um, to see my teams, you know, working not in silos, but they work together yes. um, in bringing together, uh, I think, you know, uh, and working together, you know, I, I think one plus one, um, you know, could be, you know, four or five or six. Yes, rather yes. Than three. Mm. And, and I see events like today, you know, yes. encouraging entrepreneurship. Exactly. It's probably something that yeah. will encourage future students to come yes. and study here as well. Exactly. Because exactly. you're giving them other options besides just the traditional 
types of roles, but also encouraging people to branch out, take a risk. Right. Well. I, I think this event, uh, Dreamcatcher, it, it, I think is an excellent event. Mm -hmm. uh, not only will students be inspired you know, today uh, by the so many uh, leaders coming in, but you know, uh, many of the speakers are, are alumni, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I know that they have been so keen to come back to Hong Kong you to share the experience, uh, mm. to talk to the young people mm. and inspire them and share you know, uh, uh, their, their tips and also their good advice you know, with students. Mm. Nowadays, I, I think you know, getting th this type of advice is, is, is not easy. It's yeah. especially very practical advice. Yeah. And uh, you know, that's why I, th I think you know, having these kind of forums you know, from time to time yes. can actually create a synergy and for people to meet and you know, maybe you know, people will be able to find like-minded friends mm. that you know, after today, you know, they can get together and, mm. and, and with startups. A lot of young people told me that they like startups, they like share space, they like smart space because you know, they want to gather together with mm. uh, other young people and then in, in exchanging ideas and creating projects just like uh, what I mentioned mm. to you. I, I think you know, nowadays you know, young people would find it very, very exciting and again, you know, the sky is the limit. You know, I, I hope that they will be creative, they will be innovative, and they will be courageous, you yeah. know, in, a, and willing to work hard to make mm. their dreams come true. Great. Well, yeah. on that note, thank you so much. Thank you Doug so much. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure.